Hey everyone, this is Joshua Martinez, Mark Trades Institute, with our third video of So You Want to Be a Forex Trader. In our last video, video number two, we went over um, the formula, the four key uh, aspects to look into growing an actual trading account. Today, we're going to look at an actual chart. We're going to be showing a chart or, or transitioning over into it. I'm going to show you um, how to read the exchange, what a candlestick is, uh, what a pip is, the actual meaning of what a pip is, um, and your different lot sizes to choose from. So let's go ahead and do that. Hey everyone, uh, so in front of you is uh, our ultimate charting software. This is the charting software in which we're going to be utilizing. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up a very popular currency pair. We're going to bring up the Great British Pound US dollar. If you don't know what's happening right now, it's completely fine. Let's go over the basics, okay? So, <clears throat> In front of you, we are looking at what's called um, the foreign exchange or the forex, and this, these little bars, these are known as Japanese candlesticks, and this is the Great British Pound traded against the U.S. dollar. Now, many investors they don't really know, believe it or not, they don't really know the actual exchange rate. <laughs> some, some of them make a tremendous amount of money and they still don't know how to actually read the exchange. So let me go ahead and teach you that. So the very basics, okay? On the right-hand side, you're gonna see a number. This number says 1.42508. And this little red arrow to the left is gonna show the live market, okay? It's gonna fluctuate up and fluctuate down. These numbers are gonna change as we speak. What this realistically is, it's the first currency is going to be equal to the number of the second currency. If that makes sense. Okay, let me explain to you what that means. This means this is the great British pound traded against the US dollar. So for every one first currency, let's change this to edit one currency first currency, which is the great British pound is equal to the number which is 1.4251 of the second currency. So what this realistically means is for every one great British pound you have, it is equal to $1.42 US and fractions of pennies, okay? So once again, the first currency of your exchange is equal to the number of the second currency, okay? Which is the great British pound is equal to $1.42 US or $1.42 US is equal to one great British pound. Anyone who, anyone who lives over Great Britain, it's pretty cheap for you to drive or come visit, not drive, but come visit over here in the United States. Uh, if you live in the United States, you probably want to find another place uh, for your destination because uh, it's going to be pretty expensive for you to travel to Great Britain. Okay, so in front of you, what you're actually looking at, these are called Japanese candlesticks, okay? They measure what's called price interest points over time, uh, or known as a, what's called a PIP, P-I-P, price interest point. And many traders also don't, they know what a PIP is, but they really don't know what a PIP is. And so what is a PIP? Well, a PIP is price interest point. What's the value of it? That value, let me explain it to you in a very simple way. Uh, imagine having one US dollar. And now imagine breaking that one US dollar uh, into pennies. And now that one US dollar is equal to 100 pennies. Now those 100 pennies is equal to one dollar. One dollar is equal to 100 penny, pennies. Pretty simple. Now imagine if you could take one of those pennies and imagine if you could break it the same way that you just did the dollar. One penny US is equal to 100 pips. 100 pips is equal to one penny. 100 pennies is equal to one US dollar. A pip is measuring the value of one one hundredth of a penny worth of movement between one country's currency versus another country's currency. So we're literally looking at fractions of pennies worth of movement on a daily basis, which is pretty cool if you think about it. Now, what is that pin what is that pip worth that price interest point and well it's worth much more than a fraction of a penny so what are your major lot sizes well depending on where you live in the world will also depend on um your buying power uh we're going to take a look at the average okay what, what i mean by that is this there are three major lot sizes you have what's called a micro lot position which means 
uh, you invest an average of $20 per trade, which means one pip has a value of 10 cents on average. Not too bad, right? And so what does that mean? Okay, this means if you make 100 pips, you just made $10. If you lose 100 pips, you just lost $10. Then there's what's called a mini lot. A mini lot is when you invest an average of $200 per trade. Uh, this means one pip is equal to an average of $1. You make 100 pips, you make $100. You lose 100 pips, you lose $100. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Then there's what's called a standard lot. Now the standard lot is where we see many traders uh, have the biggest financial change in their life, uh, both for the positive as well as for the negative. So it's very, very important before you start trading standard lots that you know what you're doing and you're with in proper equity management alignments. That's when you invest an average of 2,000 US dollars per trade and one pip is equal to an average of $10. Not too bad. You make 100 pips, you make $1,000. You lose 100 pips, you can also lose $1,000. Now, many traders, when they first start out and they play with their demo accounts, uh, when they graduate from their demo accounts, they usually will be hanging around the um, micro lot, the 10 cents. Because, listen, you're, you're, you're going to make a lot of mistakes when you first enter into the market, which is pretty normal. They're called rookie mistakes, novice mistakes. If you're going to make some novice mistakes and rookie mistakes, because we all do it, you know, so just like riding your bike, we fall down, we scrape ourselves, um, lose dollars, lose, lose pennies, lose dimes, right? Lose a small amount. And then when you gain some experience and you're comfortable with the strategy that you're using and you're comfortable with uh, placing trades, then upgrade if you can, you know, equity manager wise into a, a mini lot position. And then when you start trading a mini lot position or a dollar a pip, um, you make 500 pips in a month, you make 500 bucks. Make an extra $500 a month is pretty decent depending on your, you know, a $200 investment per trade. It's not too bad. Then from there, you're going to build yourself up, work your way to a standard position trading an average pip size of $10 or investing $2,000 per trade. This is where the serious money comes from. Let me give you an idea, okay? Um, you're looking at the Great British Pound against the uh, US dollar and and this example in, the, in 17 days the market moved or fell bearish 860 pips in 17 days that means if you were to sold from this high for whatever reason and then you would have closed out down here at this low for whatever reason you could have made 860 pips if you traded a standard position that is with an average pip size of ten dollars that is eight thousand six hundred US dollars in about a month that's pretty decent income with one currency okay so once again you have your micro lot your mini lot and your standard lot okay but don't jump to a standard position and get freaked out and scared and then jump back to a mini lot position and then jump back to a standard lot position that's not how you normally do this you're gonna want to go trading one micro, then two micros, and three micros, and four micros, and work your way up. Then trade one mini, then two minis, and three minis, and four minis, and work your way up, etc. Because there is going to be a psychological growth with this as well. Let me give you an example. Um, imagine public speaking. Everyone's nervous about public speaking, or the, most of the population. So imagine um, having to speak in front of 20 people. Woo, right? It gets a little nervous. When you think about it, standing up gets sweaty, palms get sweaty, shaky, you start talking like this, you know, you start, you know, trembling. Um, but after you do it like 50 times, 100 times, you're used to it. It's not a big deal, okay? But just because you can speak in front of 20 people does not mean that you're ready to go speak in front of 80,000 people and go to your local, you know, football stadium and rock the house, right? You have to psychologically work your way up to that level. Same thing with your lot sizes. You're going to have to work your way up to it. Okay. So uh, once again, this is Joshua Martinez, Mark Trades Institute. Hopefully you can now understand how to read the exchange, what you're looking at. These are called Japanese candlesticks. Remember that they measure price interest points over time, which is a pip, a pip, 100 pips equals to one penny worth of movement. 100 pennies worth of movement equals to one U.S. dollar. Three major lot sizes, 
In our next video, we'll talk about Japanese candlesticks and actually how to read the different formations of how we address and identify the U-turns. This is Joshua Martinez, Marcher's Institute. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we'll put a link in the description and also the other social media areas I'm at. Uh, and on that note, every day, helping traders find a way. Joshua Martinez out.